Hey guys, Chris here. Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to show you a video about how to remove the tour tube out of a C5 Corvette, uh, specifically my 2004 Z06. And the reason I'm taking the tour tube out is I have a couple upgrades I want to do to the car. Uh, most important of which is a speed bleeder install for the slave cylinder, which is a pretty necessary thing to have if you're going to use the car for track days and auto crosses and stuff like that. So. In order to get the, that line installed, you have to take the torque tube out of the car, unfortunately. So that's what this video is going to be about. I'm going to show you how to do that, how to take the torque tube out, and bear with me, it's going to be a long video, but it is very detailed. Some of the other videos I looked at weren't very detailed, uh, but in this video, I'm going to show you every single step along the way, uh, what tools you need to do, and then any little tips or tricks I learned. So <clears throat> if you have a lift in your garage, this will be a lot easier. Unfortunately, I don't have a lift, so I'm just gonna do it uh, with the car on jack stands. So I'm gonna have to do some more things and spend some more time like getting the car high enough up on jack stands where if you have a lift, you don't have to worry about that. But hopefully you enjoy the video, hopefully it's informative, and hopefully it helps you with whatever projects you're working on. All right, so let's get started. Now I've already done the first step of this, which is to get the car up in the air and to take the wheels off so you have more room to access it. The first step here to getting the exhaust off is I'm going to take out these bolts here that connect the X pipe to the mufflers. They are the bolt head is a 17 millimeter and then the nut is a 15 millimeter. Next, I have these eight bolts that hold the that connect the headers to the X pipe uh, and they're half inch. All right, now that I got those off. I think there's just a hanger in the middle I have to take off and then I should be able to drop this X pipe out of the way. Now I think the only thing still holding it in um, are those two bolts there which connect to an exhaust hanger. Now the X pipe is off. The last step is to get these oxygen sensors out. They are a 7 8 inch wrench. Now I've got the X pipe off the car. Next thing you have to do here is take off this cover plate and then the torque tube is up above that. Um, and it's got a whole bunch of little eight millimeter bolts here, uh, 36 in total. So once you go ahead and get all those out, you can take the cover plate off and then you'll have access to, to the torque tube. These last couple here are gonna be a little interesting to get to because the long tube headers are in the way. So just need a bigger extension to get those last couple ones out. Cover is off. So now you can see the torque tube here. Um, there's also instructions on it actually that tell you how to lower it out of the car. So that is what I'm going to start working on next. So as I'm looking around down here, finding a few little things. Um, this bracket that the header connects to you can see is cracked. So I'm going to have to get that fixed or get a new one. And then there's some oil leaking here. Next thing is going to be I got to get these headers out of the way. I can't drop the torque tube with these long tube headers in the way. So so today, the first thing I got to do is get the headers off. Um, once the headers are off, then I can actually start dropping the torque tube out of the car. So I'm going to start on the passenger side, uh, just because that seems like it's easier. I first step is going to be to take off this bracket with the coil plugs on it. So 10 millimeter on all these bolts with the very long bolt head sticking out. I don't know why it's sticking out so far. Well, it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five bolts holding this on. But the other one you can see is back there. I'm not really sure how you're supposed to get that off. All right, if you get a smaller socket here, you can get it in there and loosen this up. All right, that's the, so there was five volts in total. 
Well, now that's there. I think I just have to undo this clip. That clips off. Now I think this should just come out. Um, I guess I gotta take the plug wires off too. You do have to take these four uh, spark plug wires off. They're probably easier to take off before you loosen everything. Yeah. I don't know why they're not coming out. They should just pull off. Okay, you also need to take off this EGR system here. So these are 10 millimeters also, loosen them. These are connected to the headers, it looks like. There's that in the gasket, that's off. Also has to come off the other side. Maybe we should do that first. Same thing on this side. It's right down there, two 10 millimeter bolts. Okay, well, in any case, that's loose. We can go back over the other side and try to get these plug wires off. All right, I finally got one plug wire off. These are, for some reason, they're really hard to get off. I don't think it should be this hard to get these off. Here's another one. So I think I probably should just add this to my list of stuff to replace. New spark plugs, new spark plug wires. Um, I don't have any idea how old these plug wires are, but they're probably old. And I think you should basically just assume that you're going to break them and replace them. Yeah, I think I just broke one of these here. You can see the wire pulled out. Um, so I give up using my hand. I got a needle nose pliers now. Maybe this will help get them out. Oh yeah, that did the trick. All right, those are finally off. Get those off. This whole thing should just come out. Yep. All right, there we go. Finally got these off. I'm surprised this valve cover is so dirty, actually, but... And then this looks like this... Uh, the dipstick has to come off, too. Now on to the driver's side. I have to take off this coil pack bracket, and I'm pretty sure I have to get this EGR uh, lines out of the way, and I gotta get the plug lines, the spark plugs off, or spark plug wires off, sorry, and I gotta take the alternator off, and then I can get the header. I'm gonna go with the plug wires first, get a set of needle nose pliers, and the easiest thing to do seems to be, if you can't just pull them off, just yank them off with needle nose pliers. And I'm not even gonna bother to try to pull them because I know I'm gonna replace them. I know I'm gonna replace them now, damn it. God damn, these things are freaking stuck on there. And I pulled that one apart, that one's broken. And then the last one, it is like impossible to get my hand down in there. Physically impossible with this stupid EGR hose in the way. All right, next step, I'm gonna try to get this EGR uh, hose out of here. Um, I also put it on my list. I'm gonna see if I can just delete this. Um, maybe if any of you guys watching know if this can be deleted or not, let me know because this car doesn't have catalytic converters, so if this is this doesn't seem really, I don't really see the point of recirculating the exhaust gas. So I think I'm just gonna try to delete this and maybe take a little tiny bit of weight out of the car. Next thing I think I need to do is disconnect it here and then disconnect back, back here somewhere behind the, uh, behind, this, behind the head. I think I finally got this hose off. What I did was take pair of needle nose pliers and put it on here and twist it left and right a few times to break it loose. And then I held this piece with my left hand and just yanked on it, yanked on the other side with my right hand. And now it seems like it's about to come out. All right. Okay, that side's off. Now it connects 
the other side connects back here somewhere like behind the intake manifold I don't even I can barely even see back there but it's this hose here or no it's not that hose that hose is for the looks like the brake booster it's this metal hose underneath it if you can see that metal hose under there that's the other part of it so don't really know how to get in there next step is I think I'm gonna take the alternator off first because it looks like you kind of have to take that off in order to get this coil pack thing off and then once I get the coil pack off I should be able to get my hand in there and get this EGR or airline or whatever it's called off so I'm gonna take the alternator off first fortunately it looks like the being on the top of the engine it should be super easy so you know loosen this bolt here which is a 15 millimeter I should say you uh, definitely want to have the battery disconnected before you touch this since it's January and the cars in winter storage I already have the battery disconnected and it looks like this plug here needs to come off we'll take that off first and then uh, so it should be that this bolt should come out And then I will have to tug on the tensioner to get the belt off. Okay, so the tensioner is also, there's the tensioner over here. That's also a 15 millimeter. So, so pull on this. Okay. That's got the belt off. Okay, with the top bolt out, I'm now getting this bottom bolt down here. If you look at it, it's that one right here down at the bottom. That's also 15 millimeter, but I had to break out my bigger wrench because it was kind of stuck. Now it seems all right. Get that one out, and then I, that should be it. The alternator should just come out after this. Grab a screwdriver and pry it out. Just keep wiggling on it and then eventually oh, there it goes out it goes uh, what should I do with this I guess I'll put this over here now I think I can take this off so again pop this clip off here seems like this car hasn't been worked on in a while because everything is like not coming off that easily this there's one and then two one two three four there should be a fifth one in here somewhere one two three four oh yeah there it is under under this uh high voltage wire for the alternator so i was doing well so far but they're the first casualties of this experience. A few busted fingers. Okay. This is loose. Now I just have one. Fortunately, there's one um, freaking plug wire I can't get at. All right. Got it. So. This should now come out. Okay, now that that's off, now I'm pretty much have access to the headers. I'm gonna try to get this airline, EGR line, which it, whichever Yuma calls it, off. So it's that, that metallic line there. Okay, there's a better view of that this metallic line I'm trying to get off and it looks like it plugs in right there and I'm wondering if I could just squeeze that 
uh, what kind of looks like a clip on the top of it, and then I wonder if I can pull the metallic line out of there. So I'm gonna go ahead and try that and see if that works. Okay. So it looks like it's coming off. What I did was that clip, I took my needle nose pliers and pushed that clip to the side. All right, finally, success. Basically, I had to pull on the metal part uh, with my left hand, and I used my needle nose pliers to push the rubber off towards the passenger side. So, this is done now. I just have to fish this down here under this the brake fluid reservoir, it looks like. Jesus. Man, this stupid thing is stuck in here. This is definitely a bunch of wasted rubber tubing that's not going back in the car. All right, that's that. So the next step is we've got to disconnect the oxygen sensors down here. So I've already done one of them. You can see there's a plug up here above each header. There's one there and there's another one on top of the other header here. So I'm gonna get that one now. You see it there, it's that uh, teal colored plug. That's the one I gotta get out. So This passenger side one is a real pain to get to. I think I'm gonna have to drop the header down a little bit so I can get some more room. So let's go up top and start to take the header bolts out of the head. And then once I think once it drops down, I'll have a little bit more room to grab it. Okay, these bolts that hold the headers onto the heads, these are 10 millimeter nut heads, um, and they were really rusty. So I went ahead and sprayed them with uh, PB Blaster a few minutes ago. Now I'm gonna try to go ahead and break them loose. Uh, looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six of these total. This one on the back here is really difficult. I can't get a, can't get a good angle at it, unfortunately. All six bolts are lucid now. Just go through and work them out, and then the header is free, and then I should be able to pull it up out of the engine bay. I'm also going to see that plug there. I think I'm going to take that plug off because this wire on the starter is kind of stretched out a bit. And I think if I take that plug off, that'll also give me a little bit more room. So I popped that plug off, and that gave me a lot more room to get the alternator out of the way. So now it's pretty open in here. So a couple more bolts, and I should be able to pull these headers off. All right, with, uh, so I took out four of the six header bolts, and the other two were loose. With that, I had enough play with the header that I could come up here and reach this plug for the oxygen sensor. It doesn't seem like the headers will come out with this steering column in place. So I have to undo that bolt there, which I think is a half inch bolt. And as you can see, I used a paint pin to mark both sides of it so that I can keep it aligned. Uh, it can get out of sync pretty quickly if you take it apart and then it spins. So I've marked it with a paint pin and I'm going to take that bolt out. And then I think I can pull the steering column out of the way and then the header should come right out. So I used a half inch drive ratchet wrench and then a half inch socket and that's what I was able to get it loose with. So. Alright, I got the steering column off. If you take the bolt all the way out, um, then you could just slide the end of the column off of the, uh, the pump right there. So slide that off and then I think you just got to pull it up here out of the way somehow see I zip tied that there to uh, the brake fluid reservoir Finally, that was a pain. 
Um, the problem was the oxygen sensor was getting stuck down there against the bell housing. But one more thing I did to get the headers off was I also <laughs> took the spark plugs out to give me a little bit more clearance. I don't know if that's absolutely necessary or not, um, but I'm going to change the spark plugs anyways. So I just went ahead and pulled them out to give myself a, a little extra room. Okay, onto the passenger side. Um, I've already loosened the EGR line. I've already taken the coil packs off. This side, I think I just have to <clears throat> undo the six bolts that hold the header in place and take the dipstick tube off and then the headers should come out. It should be a lot easier than the driver's side. Before I can get to the last bolt here, there is a bolt behind the dipstick tube here, so I'm going to have to uh, loosen the dipstick tube now. Looks like it's a 15 millimeter, so that should come out pretty easily, and then I can get at the last bolt that holds the headers on. Okay, move the dipstick tube out of the way. Now I can get at the last bolt behind there that's holding the header on. Yep, I mean the dipstick tube just pulls out of the engine there, so. Now I should be able to just take all these last couple bolts and start pulling the headers out. The only thing I'm not sure about is this airline is in the way and I'm not really sure how you take it off because I think it connects behind the intake manifolds. So it's like impossible to reach. But I'm gonna see if I can just pull the headers out with it in the way and then I'll worry about pulling it off sometime later. All right, there's the passenger side. That side was a lot easier to get off. I did have to bend this airline quite a bit to get it out of the way, but hey, you can see there's not, there's really not much else in the way. I didn't have to touch the spark plugs or anything on this side. Okay, now with the headers out of the way, you can see there's significantly more room down here. Um, and I can easily now drop the torque tube out. So before I can drop the torque tube, it looks like this, this plate right here should come off, um, which is what the uh, headers were bolted to, but the, the bracket here is broken on both sides. So I'm gonna take that off and then I need to measure, I guess I'm gonna measure the height of the bottom of the bell housing and measure the height of the transmission back there and try to record the angle of the torque tube so that it'll make it easier to align everything when I put it back together. All right, these are 15 millimeters, so. Oh, wow. Yeah, this whole bracket here is, is broken. The next step is to take some measurements. So I'm gonna measure from the bottom of, I guess the bottom of the oil pan to the ground, and then I'll go back and measure from the bottom of the bottom of the back of the transmission to the ground. And that'll give me some points of reference in case the engine shifts, but I'm gonna put this jack stand underneath the engine before, before I uh, take the torque tube out, so hopefully it won't shift that much. It's about 16 and a half inches 
from the back of the oil pan to the ground. If we look backwards here to the transmission, I'm gonna measure, I wanna measure right from the back of the torque tube here to the ground. Let's we'll see what that height is. About 19 and 3 eighths. I'm measuring to this uh, little block here on the bottom of the torque tube. So 16 and a half and 19 and 3 eighths. So that's gonna be the angle that I'm gonna have to, when I put everything back together, that's what I'm gonna have to try to get it to. All right, so I'm gonna take this inspection cover off while I'm down here. Um, I'm pretty sure the car has the original clutch in it. Um, 124,000 miles on the car, so if that is the original clutch, it's probably pretty close to needing to be replaced. So to take this off, there's two 13 millimeter bolts here and here, which I've already taken off, and then there's six 10 millimeter bolts, one, two, three, four, five, six that have to come off. So we take those off and then pull this inspection cover off and see what the clutch looks like. that and oof it is uh not very clean back here as you can see it's not very clean there's a lot of uh just gunk built up on the back of the block here um and i also have a leak i've been seeing oil leaking here and you can see oil leaking here which i think is the rear main seal I'm not really sure, but I need to investigate it more. But it does, it is really dirty compared to what I was expecting. I was not expecting it to be this dirty. Um, but there's the clutch there. The, I don't know if it's original or not. Next step here is to remove the rear brake calipers. So remove those. And then we're going to hang the caliper back out of the way so we don't have to worry about the brake lines as we lower the subframe out of the car. All right, so what you need is an 18 millimeter wrench and then a 15 millimeter socket to get these bolts out. Okay, there's the other one. There's the brake caliper. Now, I'm just going to hang it, I'm just going to take it and zip tie it up right up here where the brake line comes out, that way it won't, uh, it'll be out of the way. Okay, there's that. I guess we could take the pads out too so that I, uh, I'm going to label these here outer. outer and inner, set those over there. Okay, the next step is we have to disconnect the parking brake cables and then there's a sensor here we have to disconnect. So the sensor, um, I've already loosened that one, but you just pop it out. And then the parking brake cable here, um, there's an easy way and there's a hard way. So I'm gonna show you the easy way. Make sure the car, you have the parking brake released in the car and then you're gonna slide this over the end of the bracket there. Um, basically just grab a hold of it. Almost got it, just keep pushing on it. There we go, all right. It's off now, but then what you want to do is you got to pull the actual cable out of the bracket here. So what you do is get a 13 millimeter wrench 
with a 12 point box end on the end and then slip it over this Push it all the way up until it touches the bracket and there's this blue, I don't know if you can see it, there's a blue uh, plastic thing in there which holds the cable in place. So you use this wrench, push that up all the way so it will depress this and once it depresses it, you can pull the cable out. There you go. So you were you were pushing down. That lights look pretty good. Those blue plastic clips there is what we just depressed. So you can take the wrench off of it now, and you can pull the whole cable out of there. Whereas the hard way is uh, these two bolts here that hold the bracket on. You would have had to take that and take the whole bracket off. But this is much easier to just pull the cable and pull the plug off. Also on this side, this cable back here uh, has to, this plug back here has to come undone. So go ahead and disconnect that. And then that should be everything free on this side. We come over to the driver's side. I've already taken the parking brake cable off and the plug. But the last thing is there's a ground up there uh, which I think is a 10 millimeter. So let's see if. Uh, yeah, that's a 10 millimeter. So I'm just going to get that ground out now. And then we should be good with stuff back here. Okay. Pull that ground off. Put the nut back on so we don't lose it. It's also attached to the chassis there, so we're gonna have to pull pull this thing out. Uh, next, we have to take the shifter off. Uh, so I think the shift boot just sort of pops out of place here. All right, reach around with your fingers and pull the shift boot up, and then this little thing here with the gear display uh, just take that off the next thing you want to do is that little uh, piece of metal in there you got to take that off before you can unscrew the shifter so I think the easiest way to do is stick a screwdriver in there and pop it out yep so I just stuck a screwdriver in there popped it up So there's that, we'll put that over there. And now should be able to just um, unscrew the shifter. Shifter's off, pull the boot off, pull this rubber piece off. We have to remove this little cover here, which is just to the left of the where the key goes. So it should just take a little screwdriver, pop it out. Okay, take that out. And then there's a couple torque screws. There's the one, two, and then the three that we have to remove. Okay, so these are our T15 Torx. So we just come in here and unscrew these three. Okay, one, two is to the left of the uh, cigarette lighter. steps we have to do is go inside of here remove these two clips at the back one and two and there's 10 millimeter bolts in there that have to come off and then this thing has to come off
And once this is off, we have to unplug. There's a cigarette lighter in there. We have to unplug. That's out of the way. And there's also bolts there we have to remove, two of them. Okay, so I just removed that bolt. Now I'm going to remove this one. These are both 10 millimeter. And then there's two other 10 millimeters there that have to come out. Okay, those are both loose. So now what you gotta do is pretty much done. Um, what you can do is stick your hand back here, pull up on this, pull backwards. And then this also now is, is should be free. Um, and I think it's pretty much ready to come out. Okay, we'll lift that up. Okay, it's coming free. Okay, I think it's free now. Okay, so we're just gonna slide this back and out of the way. I think that's the gas button is still plugged in. Um, I'm just going to see if I can leave that plugged in. Oh, actually it came out on its own. Okay. Well, yeah, that would have been plugged in there. I guess it came out on its own. So let's just shove this over here. And then we have this, which can just come out. And then... Be tilted up out of the way. And I think the last thing we need to do to get this shifter out is to undo these four bolts, which are probably 10 millimeter. Seems to be a very common size. So, yep, those are 10 millimeter. So, we'll go ahead and undo those now. And then I think just hopefully, we'll disconnect the shifter from the car and then I could start dropping the transmission. And four. All right, oh, we can take that cover off. And then, I think, we look down in there. That should be the torque tube right there. And then, uh, yep, that should be the torque tube and the short shifter. So everything should be good now. Okay, finally ready to start dropping the subframe. What I have to do is, there's a bolt here, a bolt here, and then the two bolts to hold the shock in. And then the same thing on the other side. So. These ones here that hold the control arm, those are 18 millimeters. And the ones on the shock, I'm not sure about. I'll come back to that later. But let's start loosening up the upper control arms first. All right, I've started loosening this up. The nut here needs a 7 8 wrench. And then the front of it is an 18 millimeter socket. So with that set up, I'm going to start loosening this up. And I'm going to do the front. And I'm going to take the shocks off. Moving this here, just grab an 18 millimeter socket. Come off pretty easily. They seem like they're 13 millimeter. These two bolts that hold the top of the shock in. I just used a short extension to reach the back there. Uh, Alright, those are pretty loose. Uh, before we get too far, 
I already have the rear subframe supported. I have a, uh, I just got this from Harbor Freight. It's an 800 pound transmission jack. So I have that set up underneath the subframe. And then probably what I'm gonna do, put a jack stand under the torque tube and then put my other jack underneath the transmission uh, is probably what I'll do to lower it out. Now I'm starting to take the torque tube bolts out. They are 13 millimeters. Another additional thing you have to do is there's a wire, this wire is clipped here. Uh, you have to take those off the sub, off the frame. All you do is grab a screwdriver and open it up and then it uh, opens the clip out and the wire comes off. So if we look at this side, I've got this bolt out already. I took the two shock bolts out. I just have to take that one off and then the left where the right rear will be loose completely. And I'm gonna go over and work on the other side. I also put a jack underneath this hub just because I don't know how it's gonna react when it comes out. Okay, here it comes. Okay. That's off. Lower the jack down, see if anything happens here. Yeah, yeah. Pretty uneventful. Control arm loosened up. So that's it. That side's off. Now I'm gonna go over and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now I'm on the left rear. This ground we took out earlier, there's also, it's a clip to the frame here, so. Same thing we did on the other side. Just come down here, take a screwdriver, uh, open it up, and then that's it. Pop it open and now the ground is free. Now the left rear control arm, upper control arm and shock is loose. Now the only thing left to do is there's four bolts that bolt the subframe to the actual frame of the vehicle. I need to get those next. Right up there, that's the first one. It's these bolts that hold the subframe to the frame, uh, these are 13 16 So, the 13 16 socket, and they're on there pretty good, so probably wanna get a half inch drive ratchet. Um, but they weren't too bad to get loose. They weren't super torqued on there. I did it one-handed. So just loosen those up. Here's the next one here. It's right behind where we hung the brake calipers. <clears throat> okay. I've got one of the subframe bolts out now. I'm working on taking the other three out. And once those three are out, the whole subframe should be disconnected from the rear. And then I could <clears throat> disconnect the torque tube of the bell housing and then start lowering it out of the car. All right, that's all for the subframe bolts out. Uh, now I'm going to try to lower it down just a little bit to see if I can get some more clearance up at the torque tube on the bell housing and then and it's ready to go. I only dropped it down about two inches or so. Um, now I got to take off the rest of the bolts off of the bell housing. I've already taken out this bottom bolt and these two are loose um, and then there's two more. There's one up here and there's one up there on the side. That had a little bit of trouble reaching yesterday. So those are the ones now I gotta try to get out. But okay. Now it's just the two on the top. I had to make a quick detour and run to Lowe's because these bolts up here, there was no way to get them with a standard uh, socket set. So I had to go buy a swivel socket from Lowe's. 
Um, but with the swivel socket now, I was able to get it. So this bolt's coming loose. And then I just have one more on the other side, and I'll be able to get this out. Here's what I use to get it out. A uh, 3 8 drive swivel socket with a 6-inch extension and then a 3 8 drive uh, wrench. All right, this one on the top here, uh, this is probably the most difficult one to get because that stupid wire or whatever that thing is is there in the way. Uh, but I was able to get it also with the, uh, the swivel set. So I'm going to take these two out and then that should free up the torque tube from the bell housing. All right, now all the bolts are off the bell housing. The rear subframe is disconnected and sitting on the transmission jack. So I should be able to just lower it out of the way. Well, let's get started on that. Remember to keep an eye on the transmission tunnel to make sure that's coming out well. Here's just a quick overview of the setup here. So, transmission jack in the back, and it is directly under the rear cradle. And then I've got my normal jack here with a bunch of pieces of wood so that it will reach the torque tube. So it's supporting the front of the torque tube. And then I have one jack underneath the oil pan so that the engine doesn't rotate uh, when I disconnect everything. That way they'll be in the same position. And then I have another jack up underneath the front subframe in case the car starts to tilt forward because we are taking a lot of weight out of the back of the car so if the car does tilt forward um, that jack stand will catch it. If we come back here I'm going to disconnect these parking brake lines. Disconnect some more stuff here. I think that that's because the parking brake line is not attached to the subframe, it's attached to the actual frame. So I'm going to remove those on both sides. I'm not sure about these brake lines though. These hard brake lines look like they go down. They look like that might, that bolt actually might have to come off. Okay, I disconnected both uh, brake lines from where they meet the caliper. Now I'm assuming these transmission sensors have to come out, so take them off those two sensors are off tuck those out of the way um, I'm thinking these these look like the brake lines here I might have to disconnect those brake lines at the fitting up there because it looks like they come down and then they sit on the subframe somewhere here's another one on this side of the transmission on the passenger side Take, take that off. Okay. Looks like this should probably... I'm just going to start unplugging everything. Because it's probably a good idea just to unplug everything. So I'll take... Right. Those two are unplugged. Next, I'm going to disconnect the brake lines up there. As you can see, I've already disconnected one. Now I'm going to do the other one. Um, these are, you'll need two 13 millimeter wrenches, one on each side to get these off. Both brake lines are free. Now I'm going to lower the subframe some more. The next thing that's got to come off is, you see that green fitting down there? That is the line that goes from the master cylinder to the slave cylinder. So I need to disconnect that. So underneath the car now, this is a much better view of that green fitting that has to come off. I think if you look at the brown part, I think you just have to push that in and it'll pull apart. Right, so if I come in here with a wrench, I should be able to just compress this with a wrench and it should just come off. Okay, I got this line disconnected. All I did was I took an 18 millimeter open end wrench and I put the fitting up here. Make sure, make sure the fitting is in its little holder up here. And then you take the open end wrench, 
and you put it on this uh, brown plastic piece and then you push towards the slave cylinder and eventually you will compress this little piece and then you can go up top and pull backwards like this and it will come out. Too bad, I'm gonna pull this down and ugh, you can see, look how nasty the clutch fluid is. That's not supposed to be black at all. Yeah. That clutch fluid is supposed to be like a clear liquid. It's not supposed to be black. That's a lot of why I'm going through all this work is to get make it to the point where I can easily bleed out that nasty dark fluid with fresh clean fluid. I think these mufflers are coming with it. They're, they're only held up by one bracket, so I think they're gonna have to just come off also, which that's not a big deal. They just come right out. Just yank on them. thing you'll have to do is you see this wiring harness up here uh, it the clips on top of the torque tubes so what you want to do is stick your hand up here push the wiring harness off towards the driver's door and then it should pop itself out of these clips there's like uh, there's like four clips on the top of the torque tube to hold that in so just push that to the side so you don't push you so you don't pull on that uh, wiring harness as you lower the torque tube out all right I was able to get the mufflers off so now you can get Really good look in here and see see the brake lines up there I disconnected pretty much looks like everything's disconnected I don't think I missed anything so I'm having a lot of trouble getting the torque tube to disconnect from the bell housing so what I'm gonna do instead is go to the back of the torque tube and disconnect it from the transmission and take the transmission the differential and the rear cradle out and then take the torque tube out separately um, so yep yeah. To disconnect the back of the torque tube from the transmission, it's just a couple 13 millimeter bolts. So I'm going to take those out. I'm going to move my jack around so that the transmission doesn't pivot on the floor. All right, so I've removed most of the bolts that hold the back of the torque tube to the subframe, or well, to the transmission. You can see there. Uh, so I've taken out, taken out seven, or no, I've taken out six so far. There's a seventh. And it looks like the very top there over by that wiring harness, there's an eighth bolt. So it's like there's two more I got to take out and then the torque tube and the transmission will be free from each other. It feels like it's loose now. There's a nut there and then there's a bracket for this wiring harness. Should be oh there we go bolt number eight now the two should be free all right i just realized um i was supposed to take the shifter off so i just undid the four bolts that hold the shifter on but there's one more screw in here i have to get out and if you look down here see that bolt right there that bolt needs to come out, unfortunately. Um, I think that's the reason why I can't get the transmission and the torque tube to disconnect because that bolt is connecting the shift linkage to the transmission. The uh, torque tube and the transmission won't come apart until I get that bolt out. Okay, I was able to get that uh, screw out that holds the shift linkage on. It's a T40 Torx. I'll show you my setup again. So I've got in the back there, Harbor Freight, uh, transmission jack underneath the back of the rear cradle. I've got a jack here underneath the transmission. I've got a stack of wood blocks holding up the torque tube. I need to get another jack stand. I am almost free. So that was what was holding me up was the uh, stupid shift linkage.
finally, I think we're seeing the end of the transmission. Okay, well that's it. Transmission is finally, I think, out of the car. It seems to be. Looks like maybe the shift leakage is still hooked up. Um, so I'm going to have to get the torque tube out next. But the torque tube should be a lot easier now that it's not connected to anything. It should just come out. Alright, now, all I'm trying to do is um, I've pushed the torque tube back into the back of the engine. And I've got it lined up to the transmission back there. I think I'm going to have to slide the torque tube back, the input shaft of the transmission back into the back of the torque tube so that the shaft coming out of the front of the torque tube will clear the bell housing and then I can drop the whole assembly out of the car finally. I can't really drop the transmission independent of the torque tube because the shift linkage is still routed up through the torque tube. Um, so I think they do have to sort of come out as a unit, unit until I can get it on the ground and look at it and see how the shift leakage goes. So I'm just going to pick up this torque tube and try to slide it into the transmission again and maybe it will finally clear the bell housing. Great success. Well, there it is. It's out. Uh, definitely wasn't pretty, but it is finally out of the car. God, because that was that was annoying. I'm not gonna lie, that was annoying. Uh, everybody on the forums like, oh, it'll take eight bolts. It'll be easy. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't think it was so easy. But maybe I was just doing it wrong, who knows. Ah, there we go. There it is. Torque tube out. So there's the transmission's final resting place. It'll probably stay like that for quite some time as I have a lot of projects planned with this car. All right, guys, and that's it. That's a wrap. Uh, you can see the torque tube there. We have it on the ground. It's finally out of the car. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can write them down below and I'll answer the best I can. Uh, that's pretty much it. Hope you liked the video. Uh, if you found it informative, please go ahead and like it because that would actually help out a lot. And you can check back in soon because I'm going to be posting a lot more videos as I do the different projects or as I complete the different projects that I'm going to be working on. So I'm going to have one about rebuilding the torque tube. I'll have one about replacing the clutch, uh, replacing the rear main seal, installing the headers, uh, various things like that. So check back in pretty soon here. I'll have the rest of them posted. All right. Thanks. Bye.